This is an analysis of Neutral Tones by Thomas Hardy. So first of all, a bit of context uh, for the poem. Thomas Hardy was born in 1840, died in 1928. Um, he was both a novelist and a poet, um, and he was known as one of the most influential writers of the early 20th century. The poem Neutral Tones was written in 1867, but it wasn't actually published until 1898 in uh, the collection Wessex Poems. And this is a poem uh, we'll see a little bit later that, that deals with the idea of memory. Um, and so the, the fact that it was actually published quite a long time after it was originally written is fairly significant because obviously it's all about sort of looking back on the past. Um, Hardy's writing tends to have a fairly pessimistic tone. That's true both of his novels and of his poetry. Um, in terms of the, the theme for this poem, which is focused on a relationship, Hardy faced many disappointments in his personal relationships, including a failed marriage, um, although it is worth noting that that marriage wasn't actually until after Neutral Tones was written. So it's unclear whether Neutral Tones is about a specific relationship or if it's simply a portrayal of his experiences in general, but it's fairly typical of the pessimistic tone of his writing. So on to the poem itself. In Neutral Tones, the speaker is remembering the moment that they realised that the love in their relationship had died away. Um, and he considers the impact of his memory of that moment um, and, the, and the impact that that's had on him since then. So the key themes of the poem are memory, loss and failed relationships. The title is important to look at in this poem because obviously the words neutral tones don't actually come from the text of the poem itself, so they've obviously been chosen for a reason. So the word neutral introduces this idea that the speaker wants to portray himself as being neutral rather than bitter, but there is an unmistakable tone of regret and loss in the poem, and that might hint at this idea that love is actually something which it's quite difficult to feel neutral about. And the word tones has a double meaning. First of all, it can refer to tone of voice. Obviously, the voice of the speaker in this poem has a very negative, pessimistic tone. But it also, within this poem, refers to colour, uh, which is a really key motif that comes up quite a, quite a bit, uh, because we've got the, the leaves of this winter tree, which have been referred to as grey all the way through the poem. So the, the lack of colour is reflecting that, that lack of emotion throughout the poem. Let's, um, before we get into analysing the, the language of the poem, just talk about the form and structure. Um, this is a dramatic monologue, meaning that it's, it's written from the perspective of one speaker. Um, so it deals with his, his particular thoughts and feelings. Um, it has a fairly regular structure in that it's written in quatrains, so four line stanzas, and it's got a regular rhyme scheme all the way through, A, B, B, A. That rhyme scheme could reflect this sense of, of a bit of a cycle. It always every, every stanza begins in the same way that it ends, giving this feeling that the memory is something that he constantly comes back to. But the metre in this poem is, is not that regular. So if we read it out loud, you'll notice that the fourth line seems a little bit abrupt and cut off. We stood by upon that winter day, and the sun was white as though chidden of God, and a few leaves lay on the starving sod. They had fallen from an ash and were grey. Your eyes on me were as eyes that rove over tedious riddles of years ago, and some words played between us to and fro, on which lost the more by our love. So if you notice, each fourth line just feels like it's it's a bit cut off compared to the others, which have that a bit of a lengthier rhythm and metre. Um, and that might reflect the sort of uncomfortable feeling between these two people, or the idea that the relationship was cut short. It's also just worth talking about the overall structure of the poem in terms of what's dealt with in each stanza. So you'll notice that the first three stanzas focus on the memory, him describing the, his, his memory of this day by the pond, while the final stanza comes back to the present day, since then, keen lessons that love deceives. Um, and, and that conveys the significance and the lasting power of the memory for it to be such a, such a huge focus in the poem. All right, so on to the first stanza. This reference to winter in the first line, we stood by upon that winter day, that immediately sets the mood of the poem. There's clearly an absence of life and vitality here, and that reflects the idea that this is about a relationship which has come to an end. 
We've got uh, further imagery in this stanza and throughout the poem to suggest that feeling of the absence of life. So the sun was white, even the sun seems to be deprived of its ability to bring light and life. And then this simile is used, the sun was white as though chidden of God. The word chidden means scolded or rebuked. So it's suggesting that even the sun, which, which is usually a symbol of hope or light or warmth, has been sent away or, or is kind of hiding away for some reason. And then uh, these, these words here that I've highlighted in green, a few leaves lay on the starving sod that had fallen from an ash and were grey. Again, the imagery here is creating this sense of desolation and decay. Everything is lifeless and lacking in colour, helping to create that very pessimistic tone and putting forward this, this idea of the end of a relationship. And even the reference to the tree here, they'd fallen from an ash and were grey. The choice of the word there is significant. It's not just any tree, it's an ash tree. And, and that word ash will therefore obviously bring to mind the ash that's left after a fire goes out, which is perhaps what happens after passion fades away. Um, and of course, ash is also grey, adding to this idea of the colourless nature of this poem. Then in this second stanza, the speaker addresses um, the you, your eyes on me were as eyes that rove. So clearly the speaker is, is talking to a particular person, and yet there's never any reply in this poem, and that would suggest that they're probably alone, and that's in increasing the sense of pathos. Your eyes, were on me, your eyes on me were as eyes that rove over tedious riddles of years ago. That reference to the word tedious gives us a bit of a clue as to the reasons that the relationship might, has, might have failed. Firstly, it might be because they grew tired of one another. Um, but it could also be that they couldn't understand one another because they, they just couldn't figure out these riddles. They couldn't, um, they couldn't work out the riddles of years ago, which clearly still haven't been solved. And those words years ago are obviously bringing up that, that significance of memory as a theme throughout the poem. Again in this, in uh, the third line of this stanza, some words played between us to and fro, we've got that pessimistic tone and a sense of purposelessness here. On to the third stanza, the key technique that's being used here is contrast. So you've got the smile, which is the deadest thing, alive enough to have strength to die, a grin of bitterness, and even the words ominous bird are a bit of a contrast as well. So those uh, consistent use of contrasts here increase the pessimistic tone once again, and there's also a sense of inevitability that whatever was good will now turn into something that's bad. That seems to be something that he's learned from this relationship as well. He seems to think that that, that will be something that will apply to any future relationship. Um, and that's, uh, that's emphasised in the final stanza of this poem. It's also interesting here to look at the, the smile and the grin. Although the title Neutral Tones might suggest that the speaker wants to put across this idea that he feels neutral about the relationship, here we do have a real sense of bitterness, not only suggested by that word there, but also in the fact that the smile and the grin that appeared on the face of this, of this previous lover are, are clearly suggesting pretense here. The smile on your mouth was the deadest thing, a grin of bitterness swept thereby. So clearly he, he felt that these emotions were false. And that's also highlighted in the fact that the smile was on her mouth. It wasn't, it wasn't a true smile, it was almost just sort of planted on her face. Um, and again, we've got references to death here. It's continually associated with the end of this relationship throughout the poem. And we saw that earlier in the use of winter imagery. The final thing I want to talk about in this stanza is that last line there, the ominous bird. Now, a bird would usually be associated with freedom, but here it seems fairly menacing through that use of the word ominous. And the fact that it's flying away could reflect the, the partner escaping or fleeing the relationship. Okay, on to the final stanza. So the words since then um, show us that time has now moved on, and yet we get this sense that the effect of the memory on the speaker is, is still very significant. He still dwells upon it. So since then, keen lessons that love deceives and rings with wrong have shaped to me your face. 
So this, these words, love deceives, is stated as a declarative, suggesting that he thinks this is fact, this is what he has learnt about love, and this is what he will take forward into all of his future relationships. The speaker has learned a very pessimistic lesson from this experience. And the words ring with wrong, um, another lesson that he's learnt from this relationship. The, um, the alliteration there is emphasising the harsh, negative tone, heightening the sense of regret and loss that we see in this poem. You'll notice that there are a number of caesura in this stanza as well, in, in the first, second and third lines. And those make the words seem a bit more halting and wavering. They, they, they interrupt the normal metre and rhythm of the poem, making it all sound a little bit uneasy. And we get this sense that he's clearly not moved on. And the final thing that I want to mention here is the use of polysyndeton, which is these repeated ands. So the keen lessons that love deceives and rings with wrong have shaped to me your face and the gold cursed sun and a tree and a pond edged with greyish leaves. The polysyndeton places emphasis on each of these things that he remembers, the sun, the tree, the pond, her face. And those things have clearly stayed in the speaker's mind over the years, suggesting that he's returned again and again to this memory. And of course, once again, we end on that very negative tone with the greyish leaves, emphasising the importance of the lack of colour in this poem, suggesting that lack of hope.